Um, game developers design worlds. They breathe life into them. And then they watch them run. They create universes to serve a goal. Which is generally entertainment and generating revenue. It could also be for the sake of art or education. The Lord's goal for creating the earth and its inhabitants is so we can prove ourselves worthy, find joy, and ultimately return to him. Both worlds are designed for us to experience a great variety of things, both good and bad. Our strength of character dictates whether we will learn and grow from these experiences or if we will throw up our hands and, as they say, rage quit. Boom. Epic rage quit. Both in real life and in video games, there are characters, uh, natural phenomenon, and events, life sustaining items. Hold on a second, let me squish this a little bit. Boop, there we go. Uh, life sustaining items, life harming items, creatures that bring joy and are a source of assistance, creatures that are a source of agitation or flat out torment. That's from Half Life, if you don't know it. Events to celebrate. they are losses to lament poor Mario game worlds and the real world are both created to provide a great variety of experiences both good and bad that we may learn and adapt let's squish this over a little bit more The Lord created this world with self-sustaining systems that adapt and interact with each other in a way to allow for the survival of hundreds of trillions of disparate living things over millions and billions of years. He created land that can produce vegetation of all kind, that can produce after itself in an endless cycle. This vegetation is fit to be digested by and give proper nutrients to billions of life forms so they can survive and reproduce after their own kind in an endless cycle. He created loads of symbiotic relationships in nature where two or more creatures interact with each other in a mutually beneficial manner, such as this zebra and oxpecker. The clownfish and an enemy, as we all know from Nemo. And of course, the bull and chicken. That classic old symbiotic relationship there. Some of the systems necessary for life on Earth can be very complex, such as the nitrogen cycle, um, the ecosystem, Sorry, that's the nervous system. Oh, I don't put the ecosystem one on here. The nervous system, uh, even termite mounds were created to run more or less perfectly. Not completely perfectly, however. These systems were also built to fail on occasion, creating trials through which we can choose to gripe or grow. Video games are also built with this self-sustaining model in mind. The idea is to put out a game that is fully realized, ready for action, and interaction with characters that can choose to do whatever they like. They can go left or right. They can go up or down. That's Qbert for you young people who aren't familiar. Parents get them familiar. Um, or they just go for loot, or they go for points, now that's a classic right there, or 
They just go to make something. You all know what that is. It's entirely up to the player. Oh, hi, Kitty. Kitty back there cleaning herself. Good timing. So when a game is released, it is, is it a perfect functioning product that works, that works just like it's supposed to 100% of the time? Far from it. Gamers will inevitably find aspects of the game that don't work exactly as planned. These are referred to as bugs or glitches. You may find that this bear is behaving in a way not intended by the programmers. Unless that's some crazy arrow. A spasm arrow. Maybe it's a spasm arrow. I'm not sure. Um, or this horse might not be acting like it's supposed to be acting. Guessing. Um, or this midair swimming person. I have played that game. She's not supposed to do that. You see, for a large and beautiful modern game like this one, Ghost of Tsushima, programmers must produce upwards of 10 million lines of code to define how objects and characters act and interact, day and night cycles, and the actions and effects of environment, and how the, they often cause characters within the game world to act differently. When and what sounds and music, music are triggered, every line must be meticulously crafted and made without error in order for the game to function as intended. Errors in code. What I got code. Code. Errors in code cause glitches in the 10 billion. Oh, sorry, million. 10 million lines of that. Uh, errors in code cause glitches in the game. It used to be, once a game was completed and shipped to stores, that was how the game remained forever. Broken forever. That was not supposed to happen. That, whoops. Uh, broken forever. But with the advent of online communication, developers are now able to intervene and send updates or patches to their games that are able to fix these glitches and errors in code. Or even ban players that are abusing game rules to ruin it for everyone else and allow the game to fulfill its purpose as intended. When the Lord created this world, he did not make mistakes. Does that mean that there are ever things that happen that he would not prefer to happen? Well, of course not. He intentionally granted us free will, the ability to choose our own path. Decisions are made every second of every day that the Lord wouldn't prefer by scores and scores of people. But he has given every one of us an inborn compass to show us the way. In some games, this is referred to as a quest marker. More on that later. Just as game developers must sometimes intervene with their creation, so must the Lord do the same to bring about his purposes. There are many times throughout the history of mankind when he has, to, when he has had to act outside of our own laws. Here's an example. Not, not the movie so much as the parting of the Red Sea, acting outside of the, his own laws, kind of bending the rules of the game a bit to bring about his purposes there. And there's one more, as we read about this week in uh, Come Follow Me. They couldn't hit him outside of uh, the laws of man, but within the laws of, of God. Um... Outside of, okay, when he has to uh, act outside of our known laws, but within his own, to assure that we, his children, have every opportunity to reach our full potential here. Or just to ban some players that are ruining it for everyone else. Oh, wait, I had a, I had a picture of that. Mm, it was a picture of uh, King Noah. Imagine a picture of King Noah. Uh, okay, because he got banned from this game. In a game, the development team programs characters to act in a certain way. This is a character in the game not, not controlled by the player. A non-player character or NPC. 
You could follow this character for hours and see how they repeat a fairly set routine, sometimes interacting with other characters or creatures. You would usually find them at the same places at the same time every day, much like us. Though as technology advances, a highly skilled programmer can create such a character with the ability to make unique decisions according to their personality or predisposition. This is known as artificial intelligence or AI. Like us, these characters can be programmed to like or dislike certain things, to be good or bad at certain things, to make good choices and bad ones with consequences, and their programming might conflict with the programming of another NPC. Like seen here. These are all NPCs not controlled by the player, just got in a fight at a bar swinging axes. It happens. Much like us. We know the Lord grants each of us certain strengths and weaknesses as well, and he has encouraged us to exercise our strengths and make them even stronger for the benefit of ourselves and mankind. 1 Peter 4, 10 and 11. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as if the ability of God, uh, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. He has also counseled that with his help, he will strengthen our weaknesses. And if men come unto me, uh, Ether 12, 27. And if men come unto me, I will show unto them their weakness. I give unto men weakness, that they may be humble. And my grace is sufficient for all men that humble themselves before me. For if they humble themselves before me and have faith in me, then will I make weak things become strong unto them. Scripture mastery. I still remember them. Some of them. Some of them. Just as in a game, the player has the free will to do as they please. Okay. Uh, they can choose to follow the rules of the world, or they can choose to willingly go against the plan of the creator and cause chaos. They can talk to and interact with in-game characters. Like that, like that dude. Or NPCs in a polite and productive manner, accepting and carrying out tasks and receiving rewards, or they can choose to act out in an aggressive manner, disobeying laws, killing these characters, stealing from them, and causing chaos, with negative consequences, such as having to fight off heavily armored guards, or being thrown in jail or ruining a relationship with a character that may be able to help you later on. In our lives, we exercise free will every day. We can choose to serve those around us or we can choose to concern ourselves with only our own needs. We can choose to help others who are in peril or just need assistance with simple tasks, or we can choose to concern ourselves with only our own needs. We can choose to defeat the big bad guy, boom, who is ruining or threatening life for all those around us, those who may be otherwise unable to help themselves, and thus making the world a better place, or we can choose to concern ourselves with only our own needs. Luckily, we in the real world have been granted a bonus from our Creator, something to remind or to prompt us to be in the service of others, something to help us decipher right from wrong, something granted to all players in this game, the Holy Ghost. At any point in our lives, we can access this power, this bonus, and see if we are on the right path or if we are going down a path that leads to danger. Second Nephi, 35.5 reads, For behold, again I say unto you that if ye will enter in by the way and receive the Holy Ghost, it will show unto you all things what you should do. 
In a game, this is sometimes ref referred to as a quest marker. Right there, it tells you to go to Ladies of the Wood. You receive a quest or task from someone and you set out on it. You can make good progress at first, but you can get distracted along the way. Or you may catch the attention of the enemy as they use brute force to attempt to impede your progress. At any point, you can open your map, check your quest marker, and make sure you're still going in the right direction. Some of us may choose to ignore this quest marker for long periods of time and spend a while doing things that have no bearing on our main quest. Proving worthy to return to our Father in Heaven. These distractions can be fun or interesting or just easier, but at the end of the day, they have moved us no closer to our goal. The Lord has blessed us with great and enjoyable activities in this world, and because we are human, we need them. And he wants us to have joy, but as his disciples, he also expects us to be willing to sacrifice those things when we are called to serve. We must always check our quest marker to make sure we are still heading in the right direction. Our quest markers are plentiful. The scriptures, lessons from General Conference, church magazines. Heck, you can even follow the Prophet and Apostles on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook and receive inspiration and direction there daily. In most video games, the game is completed when you confront and defeat the final boss. It could be a dragon a dragon turtle the classic cyborg Hitler or this I have certainly stopped playing many games in my life and never completed them the plan of salvation dictates that everyone will complete the game of life when our lives end now, whether we succeed at the game or not is up to the Lord to judge. Only he knows if we satisfactorily completed our quests and challenges to the best of our ability. Only the Lord sees all of our gameplay from beginning to end. He sees every second of everyone's live stream. All of our successes and failures. Times when we were beat down by a tough boss again and again and again. Only to persevere. After getting stronger, how do we get stronger? Keeping our covenants, attending church, reading scriptures, praying. Or we can obtain new and better and updated gear. Uh, the Ensign, New Era, General Conference. Or seeking help, counsel, and healing from others. Developers often create rewards for accomplishing certain things in their game. These rewards are generally for going above and beyond normal gameplay to accomplish something especially difficult or discovering something especially rare. Then again, something uh, sometimes you can get an achievement for something innocuous like... Uh, oh, I didn't put it in here. Those uh, an achievement for eating a taco uh, in front of your dog or something weird. Anyway, uh, eating oh eating a taco while holding hands. It was an achievement, in, an actual achievement in a game for completing that task. Uh, oftentimes, going the extra mile and obtaining these achievements will earn you a better ending once the game has come to an end. It is possible to, and I'm sure we all know one or two people who go through life uninterested in achievements living their lives concerned with only their own needs when this sort of person completes their mediocre game they will receive their mediocre reward but the lord has given us trophies and goals to shoot for in our life sorry trophies and goals i'll put it in quotes uh, metaphorical trophies and goals to shoot for in our lives to give us an opportunity to excel and get the best ending possible some achievements that we could shoot for in our lives could be baptism or serving a mission or receiving your endowments 
See what I did there? Or temple marriage. And of course, magnifying your calling. These are all achievable by every one of us, but they require sacrifice and or service. Doctrine and Covenants 97.8 reads, All who know their hearts are honest and are broken and their spirits contrite and are willing to observe their covenants by sacrifice. Yea, every sacrifice which I, the Lord, shall command, they are accepted of me. I believe that we have a loving Father in heaven who is our creator and the creator of all we know. I believe he created a world full of joys and sorrows, of choices and consequences. I believe he sent his son, Jesus Christ, that we may be forgiven for making the wrong choices and for not following our quest marker. I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. That's the last time I will ever request to give a talk.